Hey guys, and welcome back to another Managing Ford tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a first person walking camera shake. So, if you don't know what I mean, I'll show you. And what this means is essentially, if we're in first person and you don't have a mesh or animations, you'll just be a moving camera. So, to make it more realistic, I'm going to add a camera shake so the camera just moves ever so slightly like this to make it look like a head rocking back and forth. And now, you can make this as violent or non violent as you want, by which I mean moving it more to the left and right, so rotating it more, depending on how much you want it to be. So you might not want it to be this much as it might be quite sickening for the player or anything so you can make it rotate more, rotate less, you can customise this completely to get it perfect for you and as you can see when we stop it just smoothly blends back out to our standing position like this. So this is what we're going to be making today so let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So this is very simple to do so the first step is we're going to create a camera shake so we're going to right click go to blueprint class, I'm going to open the all classes down here I'm going to search for a camera shake like so. I'm just going to select camera shake and hit select. I'm going to name this one walking camera shake like so. You can name it whatever you like and open it up straight away. In here we're just going to change some of these values on the right. Now if it doesn't look like this for you you might have a different screen and if you do I assume at the top it will say open full blueprint editor in blue writing. If you press that it will take you to this page as well. However you don't need to do that because you'll just be getting these same values here which you can change where you are. However, I haven't got that, I've just been taken straight to here. And so what we're going to do in here is, like I say, change these values. So the oscillation duration, we're just going to hold down 9 and then press enter. And what that's going to do is that's going to put that as the maximum value. And now it doesn't need to be that big at all. However, this just essentially means it's going to loop for as long as we need it to. So when we're walking, it's going to be looping this. When we stop, it's going to stop it. So it will stop playing it. But this just means that when we're still walking, we can walk for as long as we want. We'll still be getting the camera shake and that's just an easier and more efficient way of looping it. And I'm going to change the oscillation blend in and out time to be about 0.4 on each one. Now you can change this to be whatever you like as well, so you can be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, anything like that, but with my testing I found 0.4 was the best for me. Then what we're going to do is this might not be open for you, so we're going to open the rot oscillation there for rotation oscillation, and we're going to open the roll, because the roll is essentially left and right, so we're going to be changing that one. The amplitude I'm going to set to 1.5, and the frequency I'm going to set to 3. Again, customize these for you, but these are the values which I found earlier while I was messing about with the code. And the amplitude is the one that you'd want to lower or raise depending on how much you want it to move. So amplitude is how much you'll move left and right. So the higher the value, the more it will rotate, the lower the value, the less it will rotate. And the frequency is obviously how much we'll do it. The initial offset we're going to have is 0, so it's the same each time. You can leave it as random if you like to make it a little bit more realistic, but again, when I was testing earlier I found that 0 just looked a bit better and the waveform will leave a sine wave. And that's all we need to do. This is the basic walking camera shake that we're going to make today, which is the one I showed you at the start of the video. We only need to change these values. Then we compile, save, and we're going to close that. Then we're going to open up our character blueprint. We're going to content, first person BP, blueprints, first person character. In here, we're just going to find some space next to our movement input. So we'll just go out of it a little bit, but be in the same general area. We're going to right click, add a custom event, and I'm going to name this one start camera shake and what we're going to do out of this is as it sounds we're going to start the camera shake so we're going to right click and get player camera manager out of this we're going to play camera shake like so plugging that in there leaving the target as the player camera manager the shake class is going to be our walking camera shake we just made and we'll leave the scale the play space and the rotation as default then we're going to right click and add another custom event naming this one stop camera shake. So this is what we're going to call to either start or stop the camera shake, meaning we can then do this wherever we like in the code. And we're going to come out the camera manager again, and this time stop camera shake, like so, plugging that in there. The target is going to be the get player camera manager there, and the shake instance, we're just going to plug into the return value of the play camera shake. So it's going to stop the camera shake that we started earlier. And I'm just going to select this hit C to comment it and name this start and stop walking camera shake like so. So this is going to actually start and stop it but now we need to call this so we can do it and also one thing I should mention is here we have immediately on the stop camera shake we want to untick that and unticking immediately means it's going to blend back into our upright position without the camera shake so if you leave it ticked it will just snap back in which doesn't look too good so we'd want to have it unticked so it's nice and smooth. We'll compile and save then we're going to come up here back towards the movement input here 
and we're going to be using this. So if you have already used the movement inputs to come off of it, like what I did in my footstep tutorial, what you can do is you can just hold down S, left click to get a sequence, plugging those in there, and then zero goes into the code you have now, and then one will go into this new code we're about to make. However, I haven't used it, so I don't need to do that. But what I do need to do is hold down B, left click to get a branch, plugging that into these add movement inputs there. So whenever we want to move, we're going to go into this branch to check something. And what we want to check is the player's speed. So we're seeing if we want to move, and then we're also going to see if we are moving by getting the speed. So we're going to right click, and get velocity, right click the return value, and split the structure pin so we can get the x, y, and z. And that's because we don't want to get the z. So we only want the x and y. So out of the x, we're going to get a float is greater than a float, putting the value as 1. Then we're going to come out of x again, get a float is less than a float, with a value of minus one, so it sees if we're moving forwards or backwards. And then we can just control C, control V to duplicate those. Now plugging them into the Y to see if we're moving forward or backwards on the X or Y, leaving the values the same of one and minus one. And out of the top one of these, we're gonna get an OR Boolean, adding two more pins and plugging all of these in here. So it sees if we are moving in any of these directions. So it doesn't have to be all of them, it only has to be one for them. And that OR is what's gonna go in the condition of the branch there. So now we're seeing if we want to move and if we actually are moving dependent on the player's speed. So let me just reroute that to keep it nice and organized like so. So then if we are moving, we're gonna come out of true, hold down O, left click to get a do once, plugging that in there. So we're only gonna do it once because this will be firing off whenever we're holding down W or ASD, anything like that. So that's gonna spam the camera shake, which obviously we don't want, which is why we have this do once here. Out of completed, we're going to call our function or our custom event, start camera shake there, and that will do that. And that will do that, that will start our camera shake. And then we're going to hold on O, left click to get another do once, plugging this into false of the branch. So this is where we want to stop it. So completed, we'll go into stop camera shake, like so. So when we start moving, we're going to start the camera shake. When we stop moving, we're going to stop the camera shake. However, you can see these are going to do once. So we'll only do it once. So when we start, we're going to start the camera shake. When we stop, we'll stop it. And if we start moving again, nothing's going to happen because it's done the do once. So what we can do is we can come out of the stop camera shake, plugging that into the reset there, meaning that when we stop the camera, we can then start it again when we start moving. So we do the same with start camera shake, go into the reset of the do once off of false. So we have that crisscross pattern like that, meaning they just work perfectly together like so. And that should be the code done, it's that simple to do. Very minimal amounts of code, all we're just doing is getting the camera shake and calling and stopping it when we want to use it. So I'll just select this, hit C to comment it as well, and name this one use camera shake when moving like so that's compile save minimize and hit play to test this so we can see that we're just standing still nothing happens and we're just a floating camera but if we start walking we're going to get that camera shake like so so the head is just moving left and right as if we we're just walking somewhere like you would in real life and if we stop it's just going to smoothly blend back to our stop position it's not going to snap so this works perfectly Again, you can customize this to get whatever you like. So if I go back into our camera shake here, and I'll just change one of these. So this is the screen I was talking about earlier as well. So this is good. So now I've got an example of what I was talking about earlier. So you see up the top, we have open full blueprint editor, which will take you to where I was earlier. However, we don't need to. So if I increase the amplitude to let's say 10, just to make it really obvious, I'm gonna compile and let's test this again. Now if I walk, you see that's a lot more violent. The head is really shaking now. And then if we put it down to 0.5 instead of 1.5, we can see that it's not as violent and it's a little bit more subtle, like so. So that one you can't really tell too much, however you can slightly tell, so that might be a nice one for you. It's not too sickening for the player or anything like that. It's just there and it's just a tiny detail which you don't really notice. I'm gonna put it back to 1.5 and finish the video there. So again, we've done everything we want to do because we've set up this camera shake in which only plays when the player is moving forwards, backwards, left or right. And again, I've just shown you, you can customize the values get them perfect for you and absolutely however you want so we can have a camera shake as if we are walking without a mesh or animations as you can see here so thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one